MSCI Asia Pacific Index up the most in three weeks on Wednesday as cooling labor data from the U.S. refueled Fed pivot bets. Philippine shares skipping that rally with the index closing marginally lower as some investors locked in profits. The index, though, staying above 6,300. Joining me now is John Carlo Lim. He's co-founder and CEO of the Injapsia backed Dragonfly Securities. Hi, John Carlo. Good morning. Good to see you. Hi, Mimi. Good morning. All right, so I um, just wanted to bring in the opening numbers. We're flat for the day, um, for the morning. The open were up by less than 1.6306. Hopefully we stay above it. John Carl, everyone seems to be joining the so-called Goldilocks bandwagon. But you look around. Are you particularly in love with what's happening in the markets right now? Are you happy with what you're seeing? Well, the, the data has been supported, right? Uh, since two months ago, uh, we, the, this inflation uh, is on the right track. The U.S. 10-year yields have substantially declined. Uh, the economic picture is still relatively robust. But having said that, so the Fed has actually been able to engineer a soft landing during a rate hiking cycle twice before, one in 1983 and one in the 1990s. I forgot the exact year. So in both of those instances, the, the Fed was not simultaneously uh, in a quantitative tightening mode. So in most instances, the slow growth actually devolves to something more pronounced. So having said that, uh, even if we give the Goldilocks narrative the benefit of the doubt, uh, what is actually more uncertain is whether the Fed will cooperate and conform to market expectations of rate cuts of uh, amounting to four to six in 2024. Historically, the Fed has never really cut because it could, but it cut because it needed to. Okay, so you're not that bullish for 2024. It, it, it's going to depend. I, I think that the two uh, the two most prominent uh, narratives right now, one is, is, is the Goldilocks, but as I mentioned, that's dependent on, on the Fed cooperating. But there's a second scenario wherein uh, which... Historically, is what typically happens. The slow growth stalls and a more pronounced uh, decline in economic activity ensues. And the U.S. enters into a shallow recession, leading to a brief, uh, you know, multiple reset. So uh, I don't think if, if I were to handicap right now based on the prevailing data, uh, I would bet in favor of the Goldilocks, but it is not a consensus view. Ah, all right. And what does that mean? For Philippine risk assets, where does that leave the Philippine Stock Exchange Index? So in either one of those potential outcomes, I think the worst case is relatively benign for Philippine equity valuation, given that valuations are already depressed and we did not have that multiple expansion. Uh, but it will depend. Let's say, for example, uh, the Fed does cooperate and uh, the Goldilocks scenario does occur, the Fed cuts aggressively, then we may have a more robust cyclical-driven rally. But it, let's, let's say Fed slows that, decelerates to let uh, the U.S. GDP decelerates to like 1.5%, global GDP uh, decelerates in kind, uh, in tandem. Uh, but the Fed does not cut rates that will put a lid on equity price valuations, um, especially with regards to the PSEI. It will still be a supportive environment since in, in a slow growth environment, uh, you can still grow the top line and um, the, the, uh, the PSEI related companies have actually shored up their balance sheet and uh, have undergone deleveraging over the past two years. They've gotten fit, it's been the year of efficiency. Uh, if you take a bottom up, bottom up approach, uh, we see one company after another uh, stating that they've, they've, they've undergone uh, aggressive cost containment, uh, which has really accrued to margins. So even in a slow growth environment, I think uh, that can, it can still be supportive of uh, moderate EPS growth. Okay. And what is a moderate PS growth? What is a moderate growth? For the so for let's say year. right now the, the consensus estimate for 2024 for the PSE IPS is around 590. But let's say that doesn't materialize. Instead, we grow around at least 8% 8, 8 year on year. 
Eight percent year on year. All right, that's at least that's still positive. I wanted to go over some of your stock picks for the year that was. Uh, I wonder, John Carlo, what would you say is your best bet for this year that actually delivered? So uh, from the stocks that I've been touting on ANC, uh, the Indestructible Six, the ones mm -hmm. that have outperformed your ICT, All BDO. Right. Uh, outside of the six, it would be Miralco. Ah, all right. And which stock do you think faces the most pressure to grow just to support its valuation? I know everybody says we're cheap, but are there any stocks left that you feel remain overvalued at this point? So most stocks are now fairly valued, mm -hmm. but if you're looking for a stock that's still pressured under the, econo the current economic back backdrop, that would be Globe. So Globe was the closest thing to a pandemic play in the Philippines. Uh, I guess it re-rated on, on account or on the backs of the GCash narrative, but it's currently undergoing a deleveraging cycle in its quest to shore up its balance sheet and achieve free cash flow pos uh, uh, pos positive status by 2025. Hmm. All right. And um, what about your bet for a wild card for next year? What would it be? A, a specific stock? Yeah. So my bet for wild card next year would be uh, let's say everything does play out and the Fed does cut aggressively, I, I bet on Ayala Land. Ayala Land, all right. Um, I just wanted to get the, um, to give you again an update. We're now down. We're now joining most of the region lower, can't help it. The PSCI struggling, we're down by a fifth of 1%, 11.62, 94 all sub indices, except for two, mining and oil and property are in the negative territory. The mining remains up by a fifth, the property by about a tenth. Uh, just very quickly, one more new disclosure story we're getting is A. Brown disclosing the DOE's award of Hydrolink Power uh, Project Corporation's two wind energy service contracts. Do you like energy stocks? Would you like energy stocks for next year? I actually do like energy stocks. I think they, they, they do strike the balance between defensive and offensive equalities on account of the uh, capacity output gap that the Philippines still has. I think by, by, by 2028, we, we lack eight, 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 eight megawatts. Mm -hmm. If I, in, uh, eight gigawatts, I think it, yeah, I'm not certain of, of the exact figure. But yes, so I think it's that, that, trans that green energy transition and the increasing ca capacity for or energy independence in the country. I think that narrative still uh, holds sway. All right, um, still on energy, basic energy, also saying they just got their wind energy service contract for DOE accommodation. Just very quickly, they're saying that for the month ended in November 30, actually consolidated sales, um, wow, more than doubled to 2.7 billion pesos. That's a 173% increase for the six month period ending November 30. It's actually up by 37% to 9.7 billion. Clearly the tourism play is uh, working out, huh? Yeah, I mean, we, we really got to double down on tourism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, John Carlo, I think we are now ready for your blind item. Talk to us about the stock that you're monitoring closely and that you like. Don't tell us, just describe. What do you have for us today? All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Go. Yeah, we have what we call an investing club in Dragon. In uh, a money model portfolio. Uh, investing. I actually bought this stock last week at the at, at the close, the day before its ex-dividend date. It features a 7% yield uh, based on our expected uh, dividends for 2024. And it just had a property infusion. And what sort of upside in share price? Can we hope from this stock? So it, 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 this is a yield play uh, in terms of upside. It's going to be muted. So to probably uh, best case would be around 15%. 15% over the next 6 to 12 months? Yep. All right. Over the next 6 to 12 months. All right. On that note, we're just going to have to guess which stock this is. 15% upside for 6 to 12 months. It's a yield play currently at 7%. We're just going to have to guess which stock this is. John Carlo, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for the time and the insights today. See you soon. See you soon. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.